start out with uh, we're going to talk about John Quincy Adams defeating uh, Andrew Jackson in the election of 1824. Okay, so um, you know we're we're getting in, we're moving on and from sectionalism and nationalism, the United States of America obviously starting to become very divided, right? As far as North and South, we talk about that. And then you have the Western frontier where they're, they're racing out West. What you're going to find out about uh, Jackson, Andrew Jackson, President Andrew Jackson, he loses an election where he, for all intents and purposes, he won every aspect of it, but he did not win. He didn't hit the threshold of votes, uh, electoral college votes. For example, today you need 270 electoral college votes. Him and John Quincy Adams, which is the son of John Adams, um, effectively nobody hits the uh, threshold, like 130 electoral college votes, whatever they needed then. It's 270 now. But long story short, nobody hit the threshold. Jackson got the most popular vote, which we all know means nothing. Hillary Clinton got more votes than uh, Donald Trump. Uh, Al Gore got more popular votes than George W. Bush. And there, it's happened, geez, I think, five times in history. This is one of them. So anyhow, uh, John Quincy Adams, you know, it, it goes to the House of Representatives, much like the election of 1800 with uh, John Adams, uh, Aaron Burr, and, you know, Thomas Jefferson. Um, it goes to the House of Representatives. So if nobody gets enough Electoral College votes, it then goes to the House of Representatives. Okay? This goes to the House of Representatives. John Quincy Adams defeats... Andrew Jackson in the election of 1824. Well, Jackson had the most electoral college votes. He had the most votes, period. Okay, they believe the election was stolen from Andrew Jackson. So John Quincy Adams will be president uh, 1825 to, you know, 1829 because you're there for four years and you start in an odd year, but you're elected in an even. So there's the breakdown of electoral college votes. Andrew Jackson had 99. You can obviously see uh, Henry Clay had the least. Uh, Jackson had the most votes with 151,000. He had 43% of the popular vote. He just, he, he did not have enough to electoral college votes. They didn't hit the threshold. Nobody did. The Congress then elects it. Okay. Uh, William uh, Harris Crawford is the other guy with Henry Clay between Qu John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson. So what happens here, folks, is this is what you'll see in third parties. Third parties, there's four parties here, right? Or four, four uh, candidates, right? They'll steal votes from somebody else. So a third party might not win or a fourth party might not win, but they'll steal enough votes to where they, it's electoral college votes, they'll steal enough votes to where now you have you have the Congress electing the president. Here's what the Electoral College map looked like with the popular vote in there as well. And uh, John Quincy Adams, who is the pink, was a won most of the northeastern states, the New England states. Okay, uh, Jackson from Tennessee wins most of the southern states. But if you think about it, he wins Georgia. He wins Alabama. You know, if he can win those, well, that's Alabama's actually, he wins. But um, there's territories there that don't vote. A lot, of, a lot of wild stuff in early politics, okay? So, if you, you know, Crawford steals Georgia from Jackson, for example. Virginia, that puts him over the threshold and he wins. If he wins those two southern states, Andrew Jackson wins he, and he's president for uh, an extra term. And that probably changes... How, how much earlier he started chasing Native American tribes out of the American Southeast. John Quincy Adams not able to get much done in his tenure as president. He's a, unable to really get as much infrastructure built as he wants to because he cannot get things through the Congress. And as you guys know, there's a system of checks and balances. Okay, And a lot of people are really, uh, they, they just don't know. President just can't do whatever they want to do. They have to they have to work with the Congress. Okay, and then if they're if the Congress and the president are doing egregious things that are violating the Constitution, the Supreme Court then, then can hold them accountable and actually strike down acts and laws that they create. Election of 1828, Jackson's gonna run again. 
Okay, he is going to win the election of 1828. And his big thing is he wants to extend voting rights to the common man. Okay, um, now folks, before you had to be a wealthy white landowner to vote, what he's trying to do is Andrew Jackson is going to try and get the regular working man to be able to vote, and he wants to get a larger voter turnout. Does he want Native Americans? Does he want slaves? Does he want women to vote? No. But he wants to try and appeal to the common man. In 1828, Andrew Jackson crushes John Quincy Adams. They run it back again, and he crushes him, beats him pretty handily in both. So there's no doubt left this time, and there's not a third candidate stealing votes. So there's no third party here. That's that, that's the importance of third parties, I guess I would say to you. Um, they can steal. They can steal. They can steal votes. They can steal territory. They can steal, you know, electoral college votes is ultimately what you want them to steal. Popular vote really doesn't matter in this sense, okay? Voting expands. So like I said, um, Jackson wants to expand voting beyond wealthy white male landowners, okay? He wants to have more people voting in the sense of the common man. He wants the common man to be able to vote, not just the wealthy, rich elite. It's called Jacksonian democracy, the idea of widening political power to the people once again. Not meant for women, slaves, African Americans, Native Americans, okay? So... Basically, you're getting what Jackson does. He wins the election of 1828 pretty handily. He has more common man voting, okay? And some tragedy strikes. And Jackson's wife dies shortly thereafter the election. Okay, so... That is Andrew Jackson. He ushers in a new political era of the common man. He wants to reform America. He wants to get rid of the wealthy and elite taking care of running the country. You're going to start having a rising sectional differences. Jackson is a southerner from Tennessee. The major issues will be the sale of public lands out west, federal spending on internal improvements, and the rising tariffs and trade coming from the outside. Westerners want the federal government to sell the public land at low prices so they can expand quicker and bring more people out west. Northeast feared the cheap land would take all of their labor force out west. Okay, better transportation is going to be able to transport goods out to a new market in the western frontier. Southerners are going to be opposing federal spending on projects and they don't want tariffs raised. They want to keep operating and making money off of cotton and tobacco and they want to have no restrictions on slavery. Tariffs, it's a tax on goods that are coming in from the country and this obviously makes trade harder. It's a barrier to trade. Okay, this is going to help the Northeastern factories in New England. And the Southerners rely heavily on trade because the cotton and the tobacco goes to Europe and goes to Africa. The tariff is going to hurt the tax on the imported goods, going to hurt the Southern economies. So you're going to have to start having an economic war between the North and the South. Okay, never even, never mind right now the issue of slavery, which is how the South gets all their labor done. The big thing is you're hurting us with a tax. You're hurting our business with tax. Now, this a lot. This debate is very much so alive right now. Federal government versus state governments. Okay. The federal government does not. We have a system called federalism. Federalism is shared powers between the federal and the state governments. Okay. We have a nullification crisis in 1828. What you have is Southerners believed. The economic interests of the northern states, the northeast, were hurting them in the south. Okay? The south wants to operate with states regulating trade. 
Okay, the Northeast is getting rich off of these tariffs. They don't want to regulate that. The South wants to nullify what the North is doing. Obviously, this is going to create a conflict. Jackson, he's a supporter of states' rights. States should control whether they want to have tariffs on goods or not. Okay? But you have another issue where states are going to start wanting to push away and they want to get away. Okay? And now you're going to have more deep-seated hatred for one another because the North is trying to run the South. In 1832, South Carolina, ironically enough, in 1861, 1860, they're going to be the first state to secede or leave the United States of America. They nullify tariff acts and they say, hey, if you guys want to federally tax us and our imported goods, we're going to leave. Guys, obviously this is you fast forward this 30 years and South Carolina is the first state to leave in the civil war. Okay. So they threatened to do it 30 years earlier. They're able to make a compromise and they're able to end this nullification crisis. Okay. They preserve the union of the United States of America and Jackson's able to do so. Okay. So that is going to be it. We're going to have a quiz coming up talking to Andrew Jackson an Indian Removal Act. Indian Removal Act is coming because that's a big part of what Jackson does. Okay, and we're going to start seeing, we'll talk more about what's going on with, you know, Jackson. Third parties, that's a huge part. No third parties in the election of 1828. Third parties spoiled the election of 1824 and left it up to the United States House of Representatives, much like the election of 1800, which actually ended in a tie. It doesn't have to end in a tie. You just don't meet the threshold of the vote. So um, I'll post this on the classroom. We'll have a quiz. We'll talk nullification crisis. We'll talk tariffs. We will talk the election of 1824, and we'll talk third parties. If you got any questions, shoot me an email. Talk to you guys uh, in the class, the live classes today and tomorrow.